Hey guys, today we're gonna work with the Voodoo 2. What about temperatures? This card has no cooling. On an old Pentium, this isn't an issue, but what about if you use a fast processor? What sort of temperatures are we getting and do the temperatures go up with a faster processor? And what can you do about keeping the temperatures in check? So here's our test setup. We're starting off with a Celeron 266 on a slot one motherboard. We have a Radeon 7000 with HUP and here's the 3DFX Voodoo 2. 256 meg of SD-RAM. We've got a 32 gigabyte hard drive here, an IDE optical drive, and this is just an XFX power supply. I've connected the Radeon 7000 with DVI to the monitor and to the same monitor with the VGA input, the 3DFX Voodoo 2. So I'm just using the input selector buttons on the monitor to switch between the two of them. To help us with the video, I asked Banggood to send us this $10 graphics card cooler and this $11 thermometer. You can find links for both of these down below in the description. So here we have the Benetech infrared thermometer GM320 with a laser for aiming. It's really easy to use. You pull the trigger, you get a laser dot here to aim at what you want to measure the temperature of. You have a button here to change between Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can turn the laser on or off and there's also a backlight to make it easier to see what's on the screen. This is the VGA Mate B05 from PC Cooler. This is basically a cooling solution that goes into one of the PCI slots and it comes with two 80 millimeter fans. So that's what this looks like. You're looking at $11 and it comes with some brackets that you can put here to add a second fan. The fans do have LED lights, so if you don't like them, you can, well, basically just rip them out or replace it with a standard 80 millimeter fan. It's a standard size. And the connectors on here, we have the usual three pin fan connector as well as a Molex plug. So let's get some initial temperature readings. It is summer in Australia. I've turned on the air condition for a while now to get the room at a constant temperature. It's set to 27 degrees. So the machine is uh, turned off. So we're getting 29 degrees basically on all these chips. So yeah, that's a good starting point with the machine off around 29 degrees. So the machine has been running idle for a few minutes just to warm up. We're getting around 37 degrees for this uh, chip here. These two chips are the texture mapping units. They're a little bit uh, colder. We're getting 35, 36 on this one, and that one also around 36, 37 degrees. So this chip will heat up uh, a lot more once we uh, run a game. Here we have the 3DFX control panel and we also have the Voodoo 2 overclocking utility. And make sure that VSync is disabled in order to really stress the graphics card. So now I have to change the input and switch over to VGA. And here we got the Voodoo 2 picture. So I'm gonna press escape and we're gonna start with the low resolution. I believe it's 512 by 384. And we're just gonna see how much that's gonna heat up the video card. So I'm gonna open the console, type in time demo one. That gives us some, inf some information about the FPS. And we're just gonna let it run for a few minutes uh, and see what temperatures we're gonna get. So the game has been running for a while, so let's check the temperatures. What I noticed is that the temperature varies greatly depending on uh, where you're pointed on the chip. In general, on the bottom, uh, the chip is a lot cooler, but if you point towards the uh, top we're getting a much higher reading and even a little bit on top of the chip we can we can get a high reading so the maximum I can see is around 60 degrees on this TMU chip let's have a look at the one on the right on the left side um, I just saw something around 62 61 so also yeah just over 60 degrees and let's have a look at the this chip this one should run a little bit hotter so uh, it's uh, cool at the bottom, but if we go up here and even just a little bit on top of the chip, uh, 74, I can measure here, um, 72, 73. So yeah, peak of 74 degrees, but over 70 degrees for this uh, chip. 
The chip is definitely very hot to the touch. I can hold it for a few seconds, but that's about it. Um, and it gets too hot. Now we will shut down the machine and I'll get a Pentium 3 running at around uh, 500, 600 megahertz. And we'll see if the temperature, uh, if the temperatures change. So here we are all upgraded with the Pentium 3 running at 500 megahertz. Okay, here we are. Unreal has been running for around five minutes. So let's see if we're getting any different temperatures. Let's start with this TMU. So we're getting, okay, it's a little bit warmer, 64, 65, or 66. There was a little bit of a 66. At the top here again, like before, down below here, it's not as hot, but if we measure uh, higher, we're getting 65, 66. Let's have a look at this one. Um, this one is uh, 60, around 60, yep, 61, 60 degrees. And down here, the main processor, let's have a look. We're getting 77, 78, 78 degrees over here. It gets colder down below, but up here, uh, 76, yeah. So definitely we can uh, see a, a rise in temperature, but nothing too concerning at this point. Now, before we move on to the next processor, I'm going to switch up the resolution to 800 by 600, which is the maximum that the Voodoo 2 can do. So the machine has been running for around five minutes at 800 by 600. Let's have a look if anything has changed. So we're now getting 66, 67, 68, 69 on this chip. Over here, we're getting also 67, ah, 71. So that has definitely gone up, 72 up here. So I can get a maximum reading of 72. And let's have a look at this chip. So we're getting, okay, we're getting 80 degrees now, 81, 80, yeah, that's close to 82. So yeah, the temperatures have gone up with the higher resolution. Um, so we will continue, we will go forward with 800 by 600, so 82 degrees. And do uh, remember this is an open, uh, open air test bench inside a case, you will likely see even higher temperatures. So we're going to shut down the machine, put in a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 and see if we can get the temperatures even higher. Here we go, this is the top slot 1 processor, the Pentium 3 running at 1000 megahertz. Okay, let's get some more readings. So let's start with this team YouTube here, 65, 69, around 69 degrees. Now, one thing I noticed is that the laser point is quite uh, off target actually. Um, when I put my finger on the center of the chip, is it, this is definitely where it is the hottest. Um, but if you put the pointer, um, uh, up here, that's roughly over here, it registers the highest point, which is around uh, 81, 82 degrees. So it's uh, quite a bit <laughs> off task, to be honest. Uh, but look, it's $10 and um, you can kind of get the uh, hotspot anyway by just searching around a little bit. So it's, it's not totally useless, but it's not a high precision instrument, of course. So uh, down here, we're getting around 82 uh, maximum, uh, I would say. Okay, and the top left TMU, um, 72. Let's have a look down here, it gets colder again up here, 73, 74. So I would say 70, 73 at the high. And let's just have another look down here, uh, what we're getting, 75. And around here is the 80, 82, 83. Alrighty. Now, I will, because we changed the resolution, I will pop in the Celeron 266 uh, soon. But now what I want to do is uh, hook up those fans and see how much we can lower the temperatures. Okay, so I'm just going to find a good spot for this cooler. It should go right next to the video card so that fits perfectly. I'm just going to secure it. like that. Okay, so we have two fan connectors here and I've got one of these uh, splitter cables so we can run everything off that header here. So that goes into here and that one goes into here. And I'm just going to orient, uh, reposition that so, it, so we can point the uh, temperature 
uh, the thermometer inside here on the chip to read the temperature. So that didn't work out the way I wanted. I was just not able to read the temperature properly with the second fan. So we're gonna try it with just one fan. I'm just gonna double confirm that we're getting just over 80, 82. Okay, it's gone up to 85. So we're just gonna use one um, fan for the time being and we'll just keep an eye out and see if the temperatures uh, drop. It's not ideal because there's no direct airflow onto that chip, but we're just gonna run it like that for five minutes and we'll see if there's a positive effect. Okay, so this has been running for 10 minutes. Let's see what kind of readings we're getting. Okay, so 61, 61.5, so 62 seems to be the highest. So yeah, that's very good. That knocked off almost 20 degrees of the temperature. That actually really surprises me. I mean, there's some nice airflow here and we are getting some airflow to the chip and let's do the finger test. How yeah, that's fine. It's definitely cooler. I can leave my thing on there and it only gets too hot uh, now. So that's a lot better. Um, that chip up here doesn't, uh, let me just orient that a bit, a bit better. That chip doesn't get too much cooling, but yeah, a little bit of airflow maybe. We're definitely seeing 51, 54. And let's try and let's see if we can get a reading on this chip. That one should be a lot cooler because it's got a lot of airflow going. So just over 50 degrees it seems. But I'm really surprised um, by the amount of cooling that this chip here gets. It's just over 60 degrees, which is a lot better than seeing uh, figures in 80 degrees. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is shut the machine down, remove the fan, put in this cellar on 266 so we have the um, temperature results for the 800 by 600 resolution, and then we're gonna wrap up this video. And here we are back with the Celeron 266. The game has been running for around eight minutes or so. Let's have a look what kind of a reading we're getting. So uh, 76, 75, seven, oh, that's 77. So 77 seems to be the highest. Ah, oh, there was a 78. So 77, 78 seems to be the highest reading we're getting, yeah. So a little bit cooler on the Celeron 266, but not much. And up here, so there was a 60, 60 oh, a 63. Yeah, around 63 on this chip. And over here, a bit warmer, there was a 66. 66 point something, so I'll round it up to 67. And let's do this chip again, um, 77, 78. Yeah, 78 is pretty much the maximum we're getting for this chip. So let's wrap up this video. We could see a slight increase in temperatures with the faster processor. On the Celeron 266, we measured 78 degrees, whereas on the Pentium 3 600 and Pentium 1000, we measured 82 degrees. We also found that higher resolutions ramp up the temperatures more than high frame rates at low resolutions. And we also found that the Voodoo 2 does run quite hot, 82 degrees. And this is in a very controlled condition with climate control, 27 degrees, and also in an open test uh, bench. So in a computer case with the card being in a horizontal position, you will uh, definitely get a lot higher temperatures. A few words on these two gadgets that we requested from Banggood. The temperature sensor, look, $10, so I can't be too critical. The only downside is really that the laser pointer is, um, yeah, off aim, uh, but you just have to like search for the hotspot yourself manually. So in that sense, it does the job and it's better than guessing or just doing a finger test. Now, very impressed with this cooler here in knocked down uh, 20 degrees of the temperature on the main chip, even with just one fan. The LEDs look, they're a bit of a gimmick. You can just um, rip them off or replace these fans. The fans uh, don't spin very fast. They actually spin rather slow, so they're nice and quiet, and they just produce enough airflow to keep the Voodoo card nice and cool. And the performance we saw was with just one fan, so if you hook up the second fan, you should get a better cooling. You can also hook up both fans, but uh, disconnect the power cord for the first one so that 
only the second one cools, but you are a little bit um, further back so in to, to cool that hot main chip, so to speak. Yeah. So for $11, look, if you're looking for uh, a nice cooling solution for your Voodoo 2, then yeah, can't go wrong with this one. So there you have it guys. Hopefully you found this video interesting. I certainly enjoyed it. I liked doing this kind of uh, videos and it was long overdue. I always wondered about the temperatures of the video too. But what do you think? Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to hit the like or the dislike button. I'll leave a comment down below. Share the video with your friends and click on that notification bell. And that's it. I shall see you soon with another one.